excuse me, uh, until the um, JPA agreement is actually modified and adopted through the process that we have established, then the, the advisory votes that have been made by the city and the county don't come into effect. Tally. Oh, I'm glad you're not making me start all over. <laughs> um, and as soon as any motion passes with the, oh, no, a motion to close nominate, uh, after the interviews are completed, the chair will receive m motions from commissioners. A motion to close nomination requires a two thirds vote to pass, including one city and one county vote. If a more, if more than one motion is made, the last motion is voted on first, then one prior to that until we get back to the first motion. As soon as any single motion passes with a majority vote of at least one vote from the city and county, that nominated person is appointed as the public commissioner and may be seated at the dais. A new public commissioner is issued the authority iPad and, makes appointment, and will make an appointment with the director for a new briefing binder. So do you have the numbers? You have a bag? Okay. So who wants to pick first? Because we're trying to get rid of that. But we're trying to fill the member. It's very awkward. You could use this mouse. <laughs> Good afternoon. I have five questions. And the question number one is, if you are appointed as a public member, what aspects of your skills or background do you think would be the greatest potential benefit to the authority? And I'm okay. glad to repeat anything. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, 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 when you use the word greatest, I don't know if you want me to pick one or if you just want me to. The greatest general. General. The few, okay. the few greatest. How's that? Okay. Well, the, I think the most important thing is the fact that I worked in government itself. Uh, so having worked in government, the municipal government, uh, from uh, 1989 uh, till 2013. 
Uh, so I think that that's very helpful because I, especially when I was city manager in three different cities, I had to deal with some of these same types of issues uh, as, far, as far as solid waste. And, um, and then also just dealing with uh, budgets, which would be important for this position. Uh, I'm currently on uh, three boards, uh, nonprofit boards, and that also, I think, contributes to it because of the fact that uh, uh, there's a lot of discussion that takes place in ma making decisions based upon the agendas and, and the uh, various uh, agenda items and, and then taking in and reading the material and being ready and being prepared to make a decision. And then the uh, interaction at the meeting, I think, is very important. I, I think it's extremely important because a lot of times what you hear at the meeting that the public brings forward, what the staff presents, and then bouncing the issues off of the different commissioners and then just seeing you know, where, where their perspective is. I mean, I could sit there in a room and read it and then maybe not get that same perspective or think of that thought that once it's in the meeting uh, in front of the public, then you can make, I think, the informed decision. Still writing. Okay. Okay. The number two, name the four facilities that the authority is responsible for managing, and describe the general responsibilities of the authority's two primary contracts. Oh, okay. Uh, so the four facilities would be the uh, three transfer stations uh, in uh, Crescent City and Klamath and in Gaskey, and then the Crescent City landfill. Um, and then as far as the contracts, uh, there's uh, the contract with Recology and then the contract with Hambro. Uh, so um, Hambro handles the transfer station and, uh, and then uh, Recology handles the collection of both the residential and the commercial. Okay. And uh, also the recycling. Tell us what experiences you may have had with fiscal management or oversight of budgets for grants, nonprofits, businesses, and public agencies. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, having served as city manager in three cities, uh, one of the primary duties of a city manager, even though you have a finance director, is that it's the duty of the city manager to present the budget on behalf of the city to the council. Um, as a result, uh, I was quite involved in the preparation of the budgets in uh, those three different cities, working closely with the finance director, and, um, and then also working with the council. We would have uh, um, study sessions where we'd go over and try to discuss as far as the goals and objectives that we're trying to achieve, and then decide exactly how many of those we can tackle with that current budget during the upcoming year. Uh, one of the more challenging ones that I had was in the city of Phoenix where uh, we actually had a budget deficit that we had to make up for. And as a result, uh, we were able to uh, negotiate uh, labor agreements uh, for a short term. I was there for a year and a half uh, as an interim. And during that period, we were able to go from the deficit and negotiate the uh, uh, reduction for a year period and then at the very end we were able to actually give the employees a raise and and the budget was uh, was getting healthy so it was a great turnaround um, also working on uh, or being on three different nonprofit boards uh, which are identified in my uh, application uh, there we would talk and I just had a meeting with RHS this afternoon and uh, we were going over the finances for because I'm on the finance committee uh, so we're going over the budget, we're going over the uh, profit and loss, we're going over the balance sheets and stuff like that. So I'm uh, very, uh, you know, used to doing that. And um, matter of fact, I, I think it's really, uh, you know, after a while you do it so often, uh, you, you sort of gain certain skills at it where you can spot different things and then, uh, you know, and share that with others and try to come up with the best approach to resolve whatever uh, deficit or surplus or trying to get grants or, uh, trying to uh, figure out exactly, um, you know, where the different checks went to and, and uh, how much they were and, and why uh, did we spend that and, and uh, is there a way where we can save money and so on. Okay, I'm going to alter this question a little bit, Ted, but I already took the notes down. So, in your opinion, what should be three to four of 
uh, the authority's uh, priority activities in the coming year? Well, uh, definitely always the budget. So dealing with the budget and trying to find out uh, ways where you can actually be more cost effective as an organization. Uh, also uh, dealing with the various uh, contracts. Um, you know, I don't know exactly when the uh, price increases uh, or just the price rates will be set. So, uh, you know, being prepared for that and discussing that in the sense that, uh, you know, where can we save money for the residents and save money uh, for the businesses and at the same time provide the same level of service or even a, a greater level of service. Uh, sometimes you can be efficient to the point where, uh, you know, you can save people money and at the same time give them more than what they were getting before. Uh, so that certainly would be a great win-win if we can achieve that. Um, so those would be two of them. Of course, uh, uh, the landfill is always an issue. So uh, as far as uh, the monitoring of that and the, the long term for that. And then I guess a, a fourth thing would be uh, our contracts uh, with, uh, um, I don't know if we're still using Anderson or whoever we're using, but uh, you know, whoever that's being used, uh, you know, as far as uh, what's the best rate uh, you know, for hauling uh, you know, the solid waste outside of the area. Uh, so I think that that's an important one because that affects the bottom line. I want to add a question. I wrote it down because I, want, I, will, I'll, I will ask everyone. I told you there were only going to be five, but now this makes six. Mm -hmm. And it's why do you want to get involved with solid waste? Okay, well, uh, well, it's an issue that needs to be addressed in the county. Uh, there's one public position. I think it's important that we have that public position filled. Uh, I think because of my background, uh, and when I say my background, because uh, I've worked with a lot of these issues in the past, and then also uh, with the fact that uh, I've worked with uh, residential communities and business communities, uh, my economic development experience uh, entailed uh, basically knocking on the doors of the various businesses in the community. Uh, doing a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and basically making them feel comfortable and realizing, you know, what issues do you have? You know, what problems have you had? Have you had good response time from the police? Do you, do you need this? Do you need that? Whatever they need to be addressed. And the same thing goes with the residential community. What needs to be addressed? Um, so I think, you know, when, when you take all of those things together, I think that that's really important so that, um, as a public representative, I want to be able to represent the business community. I want to be able to represent the residential community. And uh, I would like to see this organization be as, eff as effective as it can be. Uh, you know, certainly making the news about, you know, well, we're having a hard time getting this, we're having a hard time doing that, is not good for the community. Uh, so I think if I take my past experience and, and working with boards, uh, you know, all three boards I'm on now, I, I think I'm an effective uh, participant in those boards and I, I enjoy doing that I, I matter of fact one of the things I enjoyed most as being a city manager is what I call like a think tank type where we can sit and get together uh, maybe staff meetings talk about issues uh, or even at a council meeting you know just everybody discuss you know get your perspectives get your opinions weigh what the public thinks weigh what staff thinks and then come up with the best possible decision and and I think that I can really contribute to that, and, and I think it would be good for our county. Now I promise the last question. Okay, <laughs> sure. What would you like to add for anything that you haven't been able to say yet? Well, I know last time when I talked to you on the phone, I thought about the economic development thing. I said, gee, you know, I should have, you know, because even though it's mentioned on there, just to make sure it was clear, uh, because I know that one of the concerns that the Commission has is the fact that uh, you know we need to represent businesses as well as residents you know we can't just have a representative just focused on you know I want to help out the residents and I don't care about the businesses or vice versa someone that's a business person that cares more about the businesses than the residents so I think it's getting that the right balance I think is really important and when I say the right balance what's best for the community you know how how can we move forward as del north county and as crescent city and be better than we are today you know okay 
Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I want to start off by thanking you for your willingness to participate in a public meetings and, and the willingness to want to serve our community. So I have six questions that I'm going to ask. And I'll just go down the order and that we went in with the last. We've been encouraged to take notes as we talk, as you're talking. So if we're not, I, not just yeah. direct eye contact, it's because we're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> or sleeping but <laughs> okay so for the first question is if you were appointed as a public member what aspects of your skills or background do you think that would be the greatest potential and give me a few benefits that you believe that you would bring to the authority well I think the time that I've spent on the advisory task force is useful because I've learned oh not everything is totally an ongoing process but I've learned a lot about how solid waste works and what the issues are and what people care about um, I also have um, a lot of connections in the community I am in a job where I get to talk one-on-one -on -one with people every day and granted we're talking about health care issues but when you're talking to people they talk about whatever they feel like talking about so I feel like I pretty well connected within the community and because I speak Spanish I'm pretty well connected within the Hispanic community as well um, also my years of working with paperwork and bureaucracy um, should surely help somewhat in figuring out rules and regulations and how to work within them and make them work for us Please name the four facilities that the authority is responsible for managing and describe the general responsibilities of the authority's two primary contracts. Okay, so there's the landfill and the transfer station in Crescent City and then the one in Gasky and Klamath. And the two main contracts are with Recology and Hambro, Hambro's, whatever their little initials are, sorry. And, um, so with Recology, it's about collecting solid waste and recycling and yard, well, it's all solid waste. And with Hambros, it's running the transfer station. Thanks. Um, tell us what experience that you may have had with fiscal management or oversight of budgets for grants, nonprofits, businesses, or public agencies. So I'm on the, um, we call it the mission committee of my church, which we have a small budget but we do have a budget that we review on a regular basis and that gets rewritten and reorganized every year um, I was on the board at Danaka also with a small budget and we had to know the budget and make comments on it and then um, my husband and I my first husband had a restaurant here in town so we had to know how to run a business and then we also had a small store in Southern California um, and so you know I'm familiar with those sorts of things so in your opinion what should be three or four of the authorities uh, priority activities in the coming year well in my opinion because my passion is around that it would be focusing on recycling there's um, some of the <clears throat> producer take back things that um, have the potential for a lot of good um, heavy mattresses gee maybe we could get some heavy appliances going um, and then the landfill working on getting the water um, rating redone that's got to be really important and three or four hmm. I guess those are my big two. Okay. 
so this is the question, the ultimate question, I think, is that why do you, why do you want to do this solid waste board? At this point, I'd go, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just because I have had that experience. I do really care about recology and reduce, re not recology, sorry, you guys, <laughs> recycling, reduce, reuse, avoid having the garbage in the first place. That's something I really care about a lot. And so it is something that I'm interested in. I think I have some skill set could be used by the community, and so I'd like to offer them. Okay. And the last question, oh. would you like to add anything that you haven't been able, that you haven't said, or that I should have asked you a different question? Mm -hmm. No, I think those questions were good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you for your willingness to want to serve and to be here. And we have six questions to go through that I have uh, asked everyone the same question, and I will do the same with you, and they'll all be in the same order. <clears throat> if you're appointed as the public member, what aspects of your skills and background do you think would be the great, greatest potential to just give me a few benefits that you bring to the authorities. Want me to repeat it? <laughs> like Jack Nichols. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I thought about standing here for a long time and whether I was going to answer your questions or not. Oh. Um, because any question you ask me I've got to have the answer because I've been here for so damn long. Um, why don't you ask that question again, Martha? Okay, if you're appointed as a public member, what aspects of your skills or background do you think would ch give us the greatest potential of the benefits that you bring the authority? And just name a few. You don't. <laughs> All I can say is my experience, starting from 1993 three to 2005 and then I sat on this board as a uh, public member for five years after that I'm not sure this the solid waste authority has been my my pet project if you will, as I hear it is yours too. So I'm not sure what else I can say other than I've got a lot of history. And if you don't take advantage of, you, of that, shame on you. Is that the end? That's the answer. <laughs> Okay, name the four facilities that the authority is responsible for managing and describe the general responsibility of the authority's two primary contractors. Where, who, what is, what's the... Uh, what are our four facilities? Facilities and, and that we're two, responsible yeah, for. and our two primary contractors. The uh, transfer station, the the uh, dump, I guess you'd, I hate to hate call to it call a it. landfill. I hate to call it that, landfill, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, the contracts with our 
who are our, our two main, main contractors? Who are the main yeah, contractors? Yeah, and what are their jobs? You know? It's Hambros takes care of the uh, transfer station, does a pretty good job. Very good job, as a matter of fact. I see Mr. Fire over there. And um, the um, company that picks up our garbage that we have a contract with. What was her name? Recology. It was different when we, they started. <laughs> yes. Are there more? Well, we have two outlying facilities. Oh, Klamath and uh, <coughs> Klamath and Gasky. Yeah. Okay, tell us what kind of um, experience you may have had with fiscal management or oversight of budgets for grants, nonprofits, business, or public agencies. <laughs> this. Deja vu, it seems to me this is a question I struggled with last time. And I thought about it since then. I mean, I sat on the Solid Waste Authority. That's certainly got a budget. I had my own, a couple of my own businesses. I had a, a uh, um, commercial greenhouse operation. I had a restaurant. I, w I was in charge of some of the budget when I was a sergeant on the sheriff's department. What else do you want? Board of Supervisors. Pardon? The Board of Supervisors budget. Oh, I, oh, I forgot about them. The Board of Supervisors. Don't remind me. <laughs> okay. So, in your opinion, what would be three to four of the authority's priority um, activities, what we should be doing in the coming year? Well, I don't know what you're doing right now. So, um, have you had a uh, what do you call it at the beach do you have at the fairgrounds where you dropped off the uh, uh, stuff that you couldn't the hazardous cleanup Haz hazardous waste so that would be a priority it would be yeah. I, I don't know whether you were still doing it are you still doing it mm -hmm. that is a priority um, making sure we have enough people to run solid waste authority the administrative part of it i know ted he's i can see he's starting to get a little gray so okay yep. so the next question is why do you want to do this now that's a real good question <laughs> And I've asked myself that. Why, <clears throat> why does some old has-been want to come up here and stand in front of four people and embarrass himself? Um, I still have a little bit of life left in me. I still have a lot of knowledge about solid waste. And it seems to me that if, 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 if somebody doesn't take advantage of that, it would be wasted. But I do have some drawbacks. I'm uh, kind of like Donald Trump in that I'm not always politi politically correct. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> Martha knows me well. 
I do. So, and the, here's the last question. Is, the, is there anything that you would like to say that we haven't asked you or that you haven't been able to express? You know, I have no, I have really no expectations that I'm going to be the one chosen to sit in that vacant seat. Uh, you, you know, there's, you've got some good applicants here. It's too bad there weren't m more like there was last time. Um, but like I say, I'm here, I'm available. If you want to use me, use me. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, I won't cry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Step two of the project, of the process, is that. Um, we will take motions from uh, the floor, and we didn't, wait, no, uh, public, comment. public comment. Yes, so the commissioners have heard the applicants, and so now we will open it up to public comment. Is there public comment on this item? You guys are really making it hard on us, huh? So I'll bring it back to the commissioners, and um, I will ask for motions. Because we're not allowed to do discussion, we we didn't include that. So it's within your motion. You could probably oh, include your. Oh, no. uh, I don't think there's anything precluding you from having discussion if you. Okay. Choose. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. That was a pleasure. I too was a little disappointed there wasn't more applications this round. And I think it speaks greatly to the tape I reviewed of the last set of interviews that came through here and some of the comments that were made and maybe some of the baggage that was being carried by the authority. I hope we could overcome some of those hurdles in the coming years and with the current appointments um, see our way out and through some of these difficult times in doing so I think there's great vigor that I see in the room today through those individuals that have come before us and I really appreciate those that came back and spoke to us today it was encouraging to see more importantly the qualifications are superb throughout but one shined through for me and in doing so, I'd make a motion to support Eli Nafa as our nominee for the fill that vacancy. Well, we don't have to have a second. I'm just looking oh, to know. see right. if there are any other nominations. Yeah. So I would like to nominate Pat Black in recognition of the years and years of service in getting our um, contract together and having a contract that represents what the community's desires were have on the size of the cans, on the, on the collection cost, and on the need to make sure that we protected self-haulers, on the, um, the need that we had to have a contract where we could have two other contracts, meaning we have two subservient contracts, one with uh, Jalindra and one with Dry Creek that are that we are named in, but they're really contracts between Hambros and or Recology, and they're quite complex. And it took hours for, you know, we got it from the committee saying, here's what the kind of service we want, and then we had to figure out how to plug that service in. And I believe that we have a stellar service. Having traveled up and down the um, coast of California, I can tell you that uh, we have a transfer station that is superb. 
and I believe that that all came out of the good work of the Solid Waste Task Force. So that's why I'm making the nomination. I know that you haven't had to manage a $120 million budget or any of that, but the actual nuts and bolts of solid waste in relationship to getting things out of the waste stream, to seeing that as a priority, that pulls at my heartstrings because that's why I participate in this, is to make our planet a better place. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, in in um, in considering all of this and considering the repeat of this process, I am very apprehensive of of putting Ms. Black back as a nomination because I don't think it's fair to put somebody back in that situation and then have the board of supervisors potentially not approve them again. And I don't know of any. I don't know of any reasons of, to know one way or the other whether or not any of that has changed. And so my leaning would be to, to, to support the, the nomination of uh, Mr. Naffa that was made by another county board of supervisor. For that reason, just out of respect, I, don't, I just don't think, I, I just don't want to see this black be nominated and elected and then be not nominated because then we're going to come back and do this again and I don't want to do this again so that's that's where I stand on that all right uh, so um, after the first board of supervisors vote where there was two abstentions and uh, Ms. Black was not confirmed by the county supervisors my initial reaction was to tell Ted, send her back. Send her back for another vote. Keep sending her back. I think she's the, the perfect candidate for us as a public member. She's in the public. She has the connections out there to talk. She, she's bilingual. That's something we haven't really concentrated on a lot in our uh, outreach programs. And uh, so uh, I'm definitely going to second uh, Commissioner McClure's uh, nomination of Pat Black to be sent back and um, I did uh, receive a call from a certain supervisor who said that uh, definitely he would probably vote this time to make sure that uh, Ms. Black would be confirmed as our public member. So I have no doubt that if she was our chosen one that she would be hopefully confirmed by the Board of Supervisors. As for the city, I know that we definitely have a lot of support for her nomination. I, I would just, for clarification's sake, at the um, Board of Supervisors meeting where we were taking, trying to clean up some of this predicament that we're in from the, um, the remnants of the 10-person board, there were three items that uh, needed to be tidied up, and one was the ordinances one was the public member, and the third one w was the what? Budget. budget. And so we, as the Board of Supervisors, voted that no, you don't need to bring the budget back, and no, you don't need to bring the public member back, but we want you to bring back any ordinance change, any ordinance change that's unrelated to rate increases. And so historically, when I can't speak for the other supervisors by any means, but historically, they have been good up to their word of the direction. I mean, directions change, but so that's where, as far as I I would like to thank all the applicants for coming, especially going back through this process for the second time. <clears throat> and the risks involved of going through the whole process and then being voted down by one of the uh, council and the board of supervisors. And with that, I move that we close nominations. And second that. Aye. 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 Okay. So now the next step in the process, because 
there have been two nominations you will vote on the second nomination first if that fails you'll move to the first nomination if that fails <laughs> I don't know what we do we I guess we go back and ask to vote again or make more discussion so but that's the process And just to clarify, this is the nomination of Ms. Black? Yes. Commissioner Howard? No. Commissioner Inscore? No. Commissioner McClure? Yes. Commissioner Gastineau? Yes. Where's that public member? Okay, now for Mr. Nafa. Commissioner Inscore? Yes. Commissioner McClure? Yes. Commissioner Gastineau? No. Commissioner Howard? Yes. seat now for, for a week we did it okay so with that welcome I don't know if you want to say anything to the public at large the, the clear button. Oh, the clear button, okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for uh, the uh, potential appointment for the nomination. Uh, and then, um, you know, just basically uh, uh, both Jack and Pat, you know, I appreciate your background too, and I agree with what Jack said that, uh, you know, there were three good candidates. Um, I just uh, hope that, you know, someone will be able to, sit in this seat and, and uh, take care of business. I think that's the most important thing for our county right now, uh, just to move forward. Uh, it, it's not a difficult task, I don't think, uh, and it shouldn't be quite as political as it has been. Uh, as a result, I would uh, hope that we could go forward and just address business. So again, thank you. With that, I am going to adjourn and announce that the next meeting of the Solid Waste Management Authority will be set, scheduled for 3.30 p.m. April 19th. And I would like to note that I have a RAC meeting that day, so I need to be out of here by 4.30 probably. Uh, and the authority has an application to the RAC, and so... So you need I to be out of here exactly. also. Oh, and you're on the RAC. And following the RAC is the Tipahody debate the Tea Party debate at 6 p.m. So is that it? Thank you all for attending.